Long well, Shake here to bring to conclusion my review of all the blasters that Busby makes. This time we're going to focus on those that find themselves in the Adventure Force lineup. Now, again, as a quick little tidbit, the Adventure Force lineup of blasters is not a actual brand themselves. They're not a company that exists that produces products themselves. They are a Walmart branding with other companies making the products. Currently, Adventure Force dart blasters are primarily made by Busby and Dart Zone, which is, of course, Primetime Toys. They make various different blasters in, in and among the Adventure Force lineup. I am going to cover in this video the ones that are ma made specifically by Busby. So we're going to start off, and just as I did with their Air Warriors lineup, which is their own, if you want to call it their own branding, and those are available through various retailers, the Adventure Force ones, of course, are only found at Walmart and Walmart.com. Now, as I did with the previous videos, we're going to go in order as you would see them listed on the website. And the first one you'd find is the Adventure Force Stranger Things Lucas Slingshot. I actually do not have one of those. Never did pick one up because I have a whole bunch of the Air Warriors slingshots and these are the same thing. The key difference is that Lucas slingshot has a wrist brace. Just as you could get you know, real slingshots that have no wrist brace or that do, that's the only difference. There's a little bit of a price increase, of course, you know, Stranger Things label being attached to it makes it priced a little bit higher than the $5 Busby Air Warrior Slingshot. Simple thing, they're both the same blaster, they both use the same band, they both have the same design except for the wrist brace on Lucas. And after, unless you're a big fan of Stranger Things, I'm not particularly. So I have a bunch of these, I never did bother picking that up. But it's the same blaster, plus a wrist brace. And it's the same front load, pull back, to fire, fling a dart. <laughs> and it goes out, and if you hold it steady and pull it all the way back, you get roughly Nerf Elite performance, right around 70 feet per second, out of a very inexpensive little blaster that's, at least for its own purpose, different. And that makes it fun. You know, different, unique, fun, all the same while being different. <laughs> That's what it has going for it. That would be the Lucas Slingshot marketed under Stranger Things through Adventure Force at Walmart. Fun, unique, just different. That brings me to something I actually have multiples of. The Spin Shot. I adore this thing. Now, this thing does not fire darts. It actually fires little helicopter wheels, basically, and it claims very excessive ranges, and it does indeed hit those. The only issue with that is, of course, as a detractor, is these don't fire at high velocity. So they kind of float their way to that range, but they will hit it all the time. I have no problems exceeding their range claims. And you load in a bunch of them in line, and then you pull back, and out it goes. Not going to do that in here. I didn't I didn't pull it hard enough to actually launch it, but I will do one. Why not? And it's gone. <laughs> I'll have to actually move. I actually had to move some cabinets and stuff to get that thing. It went in behind. But the spin shot, not a dart launcher. It is a helicopter disc firing blaster that it's big, it's fun, and while you got to put the disclaimer that these aren't designed to hit each other with, everybody is going to turn that into a backyard game of get a few spin shots and see who can get each other. And it's while it's wildly different than an actual dart blaster battle, it's still quite fun because you can dodge these pretty pretty easily if you're paying attention, but it still makes it all the more fun and challenging in a different way because. You can just launch a whole bunch of these in a spread and have them flying. For those of you who've been around long enough, much like Nerf Vortex. Except instead of it being little frisbees coming at you horizontally, they're coming these things are helicopter discs coming at you. It's pretty fun. And I actually went out Bugby sent me the first one 
to try out. And then I went and bought like three more of these and two of the Dollar General versions, which basically the same thing, but different colors and adds a tactical rail on top. The Adventure Force version does not have the tactical rail. It instead has just a, a straight kind of real clean looking shell. Nice big chunky grip too. They did a really good job with both the, uh, the pistol grip and the foregrip. Very, very comfortable to use. Very easy to use too. Everybody can figure this out within seconds. So absolutely, I think a must have. It's unique. It's not a dart blaster. What it fires, you can only get them through Busby. So you have to contact them to see about getting more or buy another spin shot. And I would recommend buying more spin shots because you're going to want more than one. You're probably going to want at least three or four because they are fun in their own way. That is the Adventure Force Spin Shot. We're kind of front loading this list here with the Adventure Force series with some really great blasters. I absolutely love the Spin Shot, but I think I love this thing even more. This is the Alpha Auto 72. And yes, it is a big Tommy Gun inspired blaster with a huge 72 round double stack drum because it does actually have two darts in each slot there. You'll see them stacked and it has a little arm that as the drum rotates, it keeps pushing the darts up to feed them into the flywheels because this is a flywheel blaster. And it has, it has what I think is the best mechanism for powering flywheels, a dual stage trigger, which means pull back, pull back partially and it engages power. Pull back all the way and then we get to fire it. Now, one detractor is, of course, as you can hear, the rate of fire is not very high. These batteries are worn. It's, this one has seen a lot of use, but I don't see that as that big of an issue. You can, of course, if you want to, modify it. Swap it over to a LiPo battery pack, better motors, rewire it, do as your heart content. But as is, this is one of the best backyard blasters on the market. There's very few that will top it. The fact that you don't need magazines, you have a humongous dart capacity, 72 rounds. I mean, you literally are going to run around, especially with the lower rate of fire, you're going to run around for a long time in a backyard battle without needing to reload. And that in itself, it takes away the hassles of having to carry magazines. Because we as hobbyists who enjoy dart blasters to you know the greater levels above and beyond the normal family having fun in the backyard, you know, we wear, I have like a, uh, I have a carrier belt and I have a, uh, a back mount for six mags. And then you just reach back, pull it, reload it. Well, a lot of people don't want to carry that. A lot of people just want to grab a blaster, load it up with darts, and just run around and have fun. This is basically one of the kings of that, and it's only $30, too. So, full auto with, yes, a low rate of fire, but it also has above Nerf standard performance. This actually outperforms Nerf blasters while having this giant capacity at a noticeably lower price than most of them. And there's very few blasters on the market that do this. There's only really one or two others that would come to mind. And of course the Dart Zone made Tomcat would be one of the others. And that's more of a performance oriented idea behind that. But this also offers great performance compared to Nerf offerings. And I absolutely adore the thing. I bought a couple that I have not got around to doing my modification and paint jobs on, but I'll have to do that this year. I gotta quit. I gotta quit postponing and procrastinating. But the Alpha Auto 72, one of my all-time favorite flywheel blasters. More of a spring power guy, but this thing is just awesome. Next up to take a look at in the Adventure Force lineup for Busby is the Blitz 6. This this nice little six-shot pistol came out. And I had really, really high hopes for it. it it's basically a you know, straight-up competitor 
to one of the best six shot pistols of all time the X Shot Reflex 6. I rate that as pretty much the number one, maybe tied with Busby's older Zenith, that unfortunately has been discontinued, as one of the top pistols. And I know I'm going to upset some Nerf Hammer Shot fans with that. But the X Shot, the X Shot Reflex, has always been personally my number one recommendation for anybody. This is a very close follow up to it. It is a very inexpensive blaster. The Blitz 6, of course, being Adventure Force, you find it at Walmart for like about $7. I think the retail price was, was $6.97. And it's a six-shot front-loading rear prime blaster with very good performance. I was getting all the way up to nearly 80 feet per second with this one, depending on the darts you use. And it's very easy to prime. And has that nice little satisfying pop as it fires but again dirt cheap at only about seven dollar retail and that in and of itself is a big thing because the reflex six actually now most places i've been seeing the reflex has been bumped up in price it used to be about seven or eight dollars itself now it's been bumped up to ten or twelve depending on where you where you buy it what package it comes with because most of the time it comes with targets and stuff with it now and this this is $7. So one of the absolute tip-top candidates for, say, a family who wants to buy, you know, four or five, six blasters and just have fun in the backyard. Or if you're just looking for something to plink around with or something to throw on your side, then you don't need, you know, huge performance. But, you know, you want something that hits at least 75 or 80 feet per second with regular darts. Not a bad choice. The Blitz 6. It has a little bit of mod potential. And you could, of course, always brass the, the cylinder so that it could accept half-length darts to get a little more oomph out of it. But Blitz 6. That brings us to what I think is one of the best Busby-made blasters in the Adventure Force lineup. It's not the biggest. It's certainly not the most expensive. But it carries the spirit of Busby and brings it into a really easy-to-use in a slightly more practical way than its cousin, the Double Shot. Of course, I'm talking about the Double Fire. This is the break barrel, double barrel shotgun style blaster that doesn't use shells. I know, that's weird. Busby shotguns, they use shells. Except this one, push the button, break it, and you don't load the shells into the barrels because you don't load shells at all. Instead, you take a couple darts and you load them back and otherwise it pretty much is a double shot it has the same two stage trigger and with with that you can stagger your shots or just simply pull and fire them both at once and it comes in at about ten dollars it's a little tiny undersized shotgun yes it is it is little <laughs> let's keep in frame here but it's little, but it's perfectly fine. If you if you want to use it, it's not uncomfortable to hold, break, load, close, and fire even as an adult because you just you're just not going to shoulder it. You're going to hold it like so, and it is fun. And for those who don't care for the shells, this is certainly a good alternative, bringing in a little more practicality at the expense of a little less fun of the the shells popping out and bouncing around but at the same time you don't have shells to, to chase down you just load and fire and at ten dollars you cannot go wrong with a double fire very fun blaster absolutely guaranteed to be a hit among pretty much anybody who tries it and also it's it practically exceeds nerf performance so you're not at a disadvantage of using it either if you want to be the shotgun person but double fire that brings me to the first of the mag fed variety blasters that busby makes under the adventure force label and this is the crossbow now there are some things about it that you're not going to find you know particularly inviting that stock is that stock is for show <laughs> let's just say that it's if you're shouldering it like this that's 
you're just doing it wrong. You're going to have to hold it like a pistol. And it's a mag-fed crossbow style pistol. And it packs a pretty good punch. Being the being the standard Busby mag-fed internals, it basically carries over some of the shared power plant designs as things like the Revolution. Now, most of the crossbows I've tested get around 83 feet per second. So a few of them have bumped up to about 86 or 87, and that's very solid performance. By comparison, Nerf, of course, is a 70 FPS standard, so you're getting what is notably better performance. You will actually see that in your firing at range. And it is mag-fed with a top pull of prime and a good solid punch. It accepts pretty much every single magazine, including drums, and it has this nice little T-pull up on top, and it comes with a comes with a little red dot, and that's pretty neat. I actually like the sight. It's I know it's big, big chunky cartoonish, but I actually kind of like that sight. But the crossbow, it it also is one of the blasters I use for my dart testing, because it's easy to mount on a workbench and feed the the magazines in from the top, because it has a very convenient mag release right here. Also comes with a lot of magazines, a lot of darts, all around $20. Great blaster, just comes with this stubby little stock that you're never going to use. That's its real only real downfall, otherwise it's a very solid blaster. Now we're going to actually skip over the equalizer. I did a review on it before, but I actually gave the ones that I had away to a local family, and it basically comes down to being a reshelled totally different design but reshell of the wizard which is also reshelled or recolored in the line as part of the clash force combat pack and that features blasters like here which the clash combat clash force set has been around a little while it's been available separately different colors as you can see i'm holding mismatched but basically what it boils down to is the larger four shot is a wizard the smaller is a gem. They have a couple of just, you know, cosmetic differences, but it really is a wizard and a gem. And yes, sometimes they do sell them, you know, packaged differently, like sometimes it's the two pack of just the three shot, the dual force blasters, sometimes it's just a two pack of the four shot wizard copies. But real quick, touching on the Clash Combat Pack, Clash Force, they do rename it and rebadge it differently year to year, you know, month to month, whatever. These are solid blasters at very, very good prices. Like the four pack, currently when I looked it up at the time of recording, was going for $12.97 for four blasters. That was two of the four shot, two of the three shot, in a package with darts, $13. If you just split it up evenly, you know, that's, it's barely over $4 a blaster. That would probably be four and a quarter if you don't count the darts at all. Or if you wanted to say it was five dollars for each of these and then only like a dollar fifty for each of the little ones, you know, something like that. It's needless to say, they're good performers, they're both top prime, and they both exceed nerf performance because they share a similar design. It's just that this this one has a little bit more punch to it because it has a slightly larger plunger tube and the uh, smaller three shot, it replicates the gem performance, which is just a bit over 70 feet per second. And that's pretty good considering how tiny these are. This one is a little bit too big for a pocket. This one is pretty much just right for a pocket size. And there's not really much you can go wrong with. Again, they don't share the same design as Nerf with the Smart AR. They have a rotating plunger tube inside, so each of the four barrels on this one, or the three barrels on this, have equivalent... <laughs> Tongue-tied. They have equivalent power, no matter which spot you're firing at. Which is a benefit. It means, you know, if this was a Nerf one, you'd have, like I say, most powerful, losing power, losing power, weakest, as it went around through the, the valve. As it is... If this gets 75 feet per second, 75 feet per second, 75 feet per second, 75 feet per second. Roughly. So, benefits. The detractor is, you got to remember where your last shot is if you're going to just reload one dart. 
or just slap four more darts in and start over. But that is the Clash Force, Clash Combat. It is named both things. Very quickly touching on another one that sold under a different name is the Dual Shot. Uh, again, this is a gem reshell. There is a slight difference, and I, I did want to give it its own little section here because it is sold differently, and it has a little fish tail, almost like a shark tail, whereas the three shot in the Clash Force Clash Combat Pack has a pull ring, and it's actually pivoting. <laughs> so there is a difference. The uh, the dual shot again has that like shark fin, but it is again it's a gem. Let's just be very simple. It's a gem. Again, very cheap. Very, I say cheap as in these things, you can find these as like a two pack for barely over $5. And they're fun, they're fun little lasters. And I actually, I absolutely love the Busby gem. So all of its derivatives, get my thumbs up. Now onto a blaster that I personally love. Some others have mixed feelings on it, but that's the Battle Blazer. This thing is a neat and unique blaster that to me screams Busby. Even though, of course, sold under Adventure Force at Walmart. But if you look at this thing, it is a big, chunky pistol. I mean, look at it compared to me. This thing is big. And it does things differently. As you can see, it's a belt-fed pistol. It's not semi-auto or anything. It is top prime. And it fires at just a bit over 70 feet per second. I've got about 10 of these now, and I've had them range from about 72 to 75 feet per second. Overall, my initial testing one, I think, did even a little bit better. But I have modded these. I have painted these. I love these. And it's because they're unique. And with the Battle Blazer, what it achieves, and yes, it is a chunky blaster. There's no denying this is a big... Big blaster for a pistol, but it achieves big capacity, and the belt is removable. It has a little hatch here, also makes it easy to rotate to load. But it achieves this: you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve shots in a pistol format. Which there's not many that do that without going to magazines. And of course, Busby already has magazine-fed blasters like. The revolution like i did the night attack the light master in one of the last videos that thing was named many different things you have the crossbow here that i've already just covered in this video you have mag fed options but let's do something a little different oh and by the way this thing's only ten dollars so if you just want something goofy just for the heck of having something different but you don't want to spend much this still fits the bill literally ten dollar bill but top prime, decent power, has good, <laughs> it does make that nice, nice little pop. I don't know why some Busby Blasters do that. But this one especially, some darts will just literally pop out of it. I find that amusing. <laughs> but the Battle Blazer does things differently. Does it in an actual, you know, practical, usable way too. But you got a belt. <laughs> it, it just cracks me up. And I love that. And it's ten dollars, so it's not like you're it's not like you're really risking much. But it's as fun as can be. And just having something different feels fun to me always. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep going here. Still going. Oh, <laughs> I'm out now. But that's the Battle Blazer. Fun little pistol. It's belt fed and does definitely have some room for modding. I've done so. Check it out on the channel. Now coming to a couple of blasters that come in the same package. That's the Arsenal pack that features the bolt action rifle, which is basically a reskin of Andrea's rifle. And for many of the same reasons, I don't particularly like this blaster much at all. I have seen a couple people who do and more power to you. I don't find that I like this one much at all. It has, again, for almost the same reasons, it has a very, very poor ergonomic setup for anybody of any age to try to hold this thing. I mean, there is no... Normally, 
on a bolt action rifle style blaster, you would want a drop. Some sort of a pistol grip going back into a, a sweeping stock that you can actually shoulder. For one, stock's way too short. You know, only only a child would even the smallest of child the smallest of child smallest of children. <laughs> the smallest of children would even, you know, attempt to use this thing, you know, to fire it from the shoulder. But holding it is a whole other story. You know, you've seen me, I was you know, emulating using it like this and then just pull the trigger with a free hand while holding the blaster with the other hand. Because there is no good way to grab this. And it's exactly like the Andrews rifle issue. It does take magazines, and this one actually has better magazine compatibility. Andrews rifle is hit or miss. But the, the better news, as I set that aside, what it comes with in the package is one of the best mag-fed top prime pistols on the market. I initially was the one that coined the term that this is the Busby Toys model 1902 because it has BBT 1902 written here or it's actually imprinted and molded in above the magwell and obvious name choice Busby Toys model 1902 this thing is the cousin of the revolution with an even sturdier shell it still does have some creaking because Busby doesn't do interlocking tabs when you put the shells together so the plastic still does, you know, it still does creak a little bit as it flexes. But it's a beefy shell. Like, I don't, I don't see anything ever damaging this, really. And it has a chunky grip. Like, full-size hand can easily grab it and have lots of room to stare. But it's also not alienating to a smaller hand. They did it right with this. They just need to sell this separately. And then it's basically the Adventure Force Revolution. Whole different shell design. It has ports here where you can actually see the magazine through there. Let me fire a shot off. And if I remove the magazine, you'll see right through it. You can kind of almost see me. At least I can see the camera. But for MagFed, MagFed Top Prime Pistols, this is right there with the Revolution. Now, for whatever reason, I tend to see about 5 FPS less out of these straight out of the package than I do the Revolution. The Revolutions get, you know, 85 to 90 feet per second. I only see around 80 to 85 out of these. Don't know why. Maybe there's a different seal that they've thrown in during the, uh, you know, production of these. The actual, like, plunger seal. But very solid, very solid blaster that I wish sold separately without the rifle being you know, piggybacking onto this, because this is fantastic. That is, as good as this is, that to me is just as bad. So it's give and take if you buy the Arsenal pack. Because I don't find the Arsenal rifle to be good for anybody. It's uncomfortable for the smallest of kids all the way up to the, the biggest adults. This, however, is sublime. And I love the 1902. Need to be able to get this separately. Busby you're listening which i know you do actually watch my video so model 1902 available as a solo item maybe throw in two or three magazines you know a whole bunch of your newer darts and then we're good this would be an awesome deal let's say i'm gonna i'm gonna go out and say this 15 dollars three magazines a whole bunch of the new improved darts and run with it this thing would, would be a smash hit at that. And maybe even throw in a couple targets. Because everybody loves the plank. Model 1902. One of the best blasters Busby currently makes. Paired up, unfortunately, with one of the worst. Now we're going to finish up with, as everybody says, last but not least. Now, it's certainly not the least blaster. It's the lowest cost. So least priced. This is the little spring fire. Now, I say this is not the least because this is actually one of the best blasters, period, in the Adventure Force lineup. For the fact that it's a great little blaster for a very cheap little price of under $4. This thing retails for $3.97. And it is a front load. You got four shots. And it packs a decent little punch. You do have to manually rotate the, the cylinder. 
that actually bounced out of the out of the dart catcher, so it didn't do its job, and hit the camera in the back. But this thing is actually very well made, has the neatness of a translucent plunger tube, so you can actually see the spring, you see the plunger rod, you see everything move and work. So as you fire this thing, you get to actually see it go. It's that's pretty neat. And the fact that they took the time to do this on a very, very inexpensive blaster, I just enjoy. And these things are fantastic for just, again, the backyard fun with the family. Or if you're going to have the desire to, I would like to try modding something. Maybe it's your first time ever. This little thing here, $4, so if you, if you mess it up, you know, no big deal. Go buy two or three of them to try out and practice on. But it also has pretty good power potential. There's They're not utilizing most of it in stock form because it don't, the uh, stock plunger rod only pulls back to here. Like right here is where it pulls back to. It can, with a couple of just very basic modifications, get more draw length, higher spring rate, brass up the cylinders, and then you have yourself a fun little surprise of a pocket monster because this thing can't actually punch well above what you would expect. I have one that's firing at over 100 feet per second and that's pretty easy to do. The spring fire, last but definitely not least, an overused phrase but truly means it. Least in cost but definitely not least in potential or even its own stock usage. But that brings to a close the Adventure Force blasters that Busby makes. And after finishing up with the little spring fire, which is, as the saying goes, is last but not least, overused saying, but really rings true. That little thing is a great little blaster that has a lot of potential. And just as it is stock, it, it's a great little thing to buy, just a pocket sized blaster that works great. But B Busby actually makes a number of good blasters among the Adventure Force lineup. And I don't think they get their their, you know, worthwhile attention from, you know, not only the community, but just regular consumers because they get overlooked. Things like the Alpha Auto 72 is a great blaster. And not just for the people who are looking to get more performance out of everything that flings foam, but for the, the family having fun in the backyard. Things like the crossbow, the double fire, the battle blazer, they're all good blasters. And they all offer something that's distinctly Busby-ish compared to the other offerings in the past and present from X-Shot or Dart Zone, which, you know, do their own distinctive thing. I mean, neither good nor bad. But check these out, and if you stay to the end, thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this very long, drawn-out series of covering every single blaster that Busby currently makes. Now, we'll get back to regular videos with a few reviews coming up, and then into some modding. So, hope you stay around, enjoy enjoy these videos, and hang around for the future ones. Till next time, it's Mongoose Jake saying thanks for watching.